you have the floor. Well, first of all, and while I prepare my presentation, I wanted to thank the organization of this first international symposium of DAO deficiency, which I think is a, a very relevant uh, initiative. And uh, as, um, as you said, I am an allergologist and histamine is a molecule that we work with uh, all the time. And this DAO deficiency among many of my colleagues this is something that um, they do not believe in. We do not have to believe in it, actually. We just have to have a look at a scientific um, evidence and we need to have the experience with patients to, um, to realize that uh, patients are, are there and we have this problem and we cannot ignore it. And uh, without further ado, I think that you are um, seeing the presentation on the screen. Well, I have to declare that I have no conflict of interest uh, regarding this uh, presentation, and this will be the context of my presentation. I will very briefly talk about um, this, and I imagine that you talked about it as well in the morning, histamine biology and metabolism. I will um, focus a little bit more on the effects of histamine on the skin. I will talk about the uh, um, flaws or deficiencies in the diagnosis of DAO um, deficit uh, or deficiency. And uh, throughout half of my presentation, I'll focus on clinical studies that relate dermatological disorders with the DAO deficiency. I will not focus on the clinical manifestation on skin of DAO deficiency, but what uh, dermatological disorders could be related to a um, DAO deficiency. And regarding the uh, biology of histamine, the, we commented on it already. I wanted to highlight, because it's quite relevant for this talk, that the sources of histamine could be exogenous, diet, or endogenous. Um, we need to pay a lot of attention to uh, intestinal microbiota, those are most of all uh, proteolytic bacteria. And we should have to deal with this. And also cells that we have in our uh, organism in different tissues that um, uh, with which um, allergologists uh, work on, for example, um, blastocytes and other um, histamine producer cells. Also enterochromocene cells of the stomach and histaminergic neurons. There are other cells that produce histamine, uh, but a thousand or a hundred times less than these cells. For example, mm, mm, T cells, dendritic cells, and neutrophils, etc. Obviously, we all know that um, histamine has some bi biological effects, mainly uh, through its uh, rece receptors. And we have described four of them. Uh, the, the last one, the type 4 one at the end of the 20th century. Um, but these can have effects uh, not only by its link with the receptor, but it's got effects on the DNA, uh, etc. The localization of the different receptors, you can see it there. Uh, the uh, type one, uh, one, for example, blood vessels, heart, uh, uterine muscle, bronchial muscle, also um, gastric cells, immunologic cells. Uh, type three, we see more of the um, neurological localization or neuronal localization, but uh, they could also act at, as immunoregulators, for example, eosinophils, dendritic cells, and monocytes. And the most recently described are present in the bone marrow and cells of the immune system because they, we feel that they're important immunoregulators because histamine is an immunoregulator through type 4 receptor. As uh, we can see, histamine has uh, effects in uh, basically all the organs and systems of uh, the body. Of course, uh, we have a Pareto, urticaria, flushing, uh, but it produces effects in other tissues and systems, and it can lead to a myriad of uh, symptoms uh, among them. Allergologists uh, can see this very often, uh, anaphylaxia-like um, um, symptoms, which are not real anaphylaxia, but uh, an excess of histamine 
can mm, can lead to a real anaphylaxia uh, um, symptom um, disorder. Uh, the degradation uh, ways of uh, for histamine. We know that DAO degradates this system in extra in an extracellular way in kidney, placenta, uh, for example. And I wanted to mention this uh, work, which is old, but they used here human skin, um, homogeneous human skin. Uh, and we, we would see that the totality of histamine that appeared and uh, that was in the skin degradated not through DAO, but through and methyl transferase uh, histamine. So DAO didn't have a role in the degradation of histamine or, on the skin. And this could be uh, clinically relevant when we think about uh, exogenous DAO degrading histamine on the skin. And probably it happens the same with the uh, internal one. What are the effects of histamine on the skin? Um, we all know about that. It's going to produce it's going to produce type one and type two receptors. These urticaria, the uh, permeability. Uh, well, there we have images of uh, edemas and urticaria. That's what we use in in skin uh, trials, and we have a positive reaction with uh, the drug nolotil. Also, prurito on skin through the receptor in the uh, certain fibers in receptor type 1. Um, and we are seeing in the last few studies the importance of this type 4 receptor in chronic pruritus. Uh, diseases like psoriasis or atopic dermatitis. And um, actually, actually, there are uh, inverse analogous of type 4 receptors that are being developed in clinical studies for the control of uh, Purito in uh, atopic dermatitis and psoriasis, and this is um, having very good um, results. As I said before, it's important immunoregulator role uh, with regulation of a chemotaxis, the um, reg in the regulation of uh, Th2 via also implied in the um, neurogenic inflammation through this relationship between mast cells and axons and all of this through this type 3 receptor. And it's also important that effect of the excess of uh, histamine directly not through the receptor, but on the expression of genes related to this barrier function. Um, and this could lead to an alteration of the uh, skin barrier or cutaneous barrier. I'm not going to talk about this in a lot of detail, but I wanted to say that there are recent art revision articles of the role of uh, histamine type 4 receptor in uh, dermatitis and psoriasis. Um, these are complex um, vias and it, it has an influence in other cells. But well, we if we focus on uh, DAO um, deficiency, I wanted to mention the difficulty in diagnosis. This is a clinical study that we... Um, did a few years ago uh, in the year um, 2020, but we collected data between um, the years 19th and 18th and 19th. This was a, um, an undergrade work of one of the, our, student, our students uh, in cooperation with the Laboratory Genica in Madrid and Nutrition Center of Adriana Duelo and our uh, clinic. We selected only male patients to not to have that um, variation or cyclic variation of uh, diamine oxidase in, in plasm in women with um, in their uh, menstrual cycle. So we just selected male patients that had a, um, some histaminosis um, symptoms. And then the uh, genetic analysis of uh, the gene and we had mutations in three loci, and the analysis uh, adds another uh, loci, but these were the ones that we were relating more to a, a DAO deficit. And the first thing we could see is that if uh, the patient was uh, homozygotic for mutations, there was a clear correlation with the deficiency of uh, DAO in plasma. If it was heterozygotic, then 
it wasn't so acute. Uh, all of that uh, in comparison with the native expression of the gene, of the non-mutated gene. When we try to correlate the uh, plasmatic activity with the different symptoms of these uh, patients with histaminosis, like digestive symptoms, uh, uh, skin symptoms, or neurological ones, we couldn't see uh, statistically significant differences between having this uh, Dow level in plasma or not, having symptoms or not. So we could only see those differences when the patient said that they, they would get worse with high histamine foods, for example. And what we could see is that the number of mutations in these three loci uh, would uh, vary or would be related with the presence or absence of symptoms in the locomotor apparatus, uh, vascular, neurological, or cutaneous uh, skin-related ones. So it, having these uh, low plasma DAO or finding mutations in this DAO gene, we couldn't correlate it clearly with uh, certain kinds of uh, symptoms that the patient uh, presented. There was another study or a previous study in 2011 by one of the main uh, mag magazines in allergy, and they reached uh, conclusions which were very similar. So variations in this the DAO gene, although they have a great influence in DAO um, expression, that, mm, that wouldn't uh, totally explain these uh, staminosis um, uh, disorders, so there could be other environmental factors that would explain these uh, differences. So uh, this is what uh, I wanted to say, that not only these DAO levels would uh, be related to the symptoms of histamine intolerance, and even, and this is, uh, we have a white uh, a group of uh, pa patients in which we uh, measure in a combined way the plasmatic DAO and the genetic DAO, and you have patients that have normal levels of DAO in plasma with the symptoms of histaminosis and they have mutations in the gene. So even though you're producing a normal level of DAO, maybe that DAO functionally is not working uh, properly and this could be not degrading histamine uh, accordingly. Um, something else for the uh, diagnosis of histaminosis. This is a work in which they had patients with uh, symptoms. They had been to this, um, they had uh, gone to the doctor because of an allergy. They excluded patients with food allergy, uh, celiac disease, uh, uh, reflux, or systemic nickel sensitivity, which could produce uh, similar symptoms. And what they did is analyze the different symptoms. And I wanted to um, stress that 30% of those patients had um, skin-related uh, symptoms. This is a short series, 14 of them. But as you can see, these cutaneous uh, symptoms were not very common. And all of them, yes, uh, counted on uh, low uh, DAO values in, in plasma. And here, many of them uh, referred uh, bloating. In our experience, this bloating is not a, a typical system of this DAO deficiency. It's more abdominal pain, but uh, this uh, bloating, we associate it more with an overgrowth of bacteria and a uh, fermentation of uh, sugar. So many of these patients um, had, uh, apart from the fact that they had this low DAO, um, they also had a problem of uh, intestinal dysbiosis or an overgrowth of bacteria. Um, so that's what I wanted to highlight, that there are patients in which we suspect this uh, DAO deficiency, but we should consider other concessions or alterations that could generate high levels of histamine, for example, dysbiosis. So then, having said that, we're going to focus on the clinical studies that are related with hepatology and dermatology. We could think that chronic urticaria is a pathology in which the deficiency of DAO or histamine, and this should take part in this. This is something from the 1990, uh, published in Allergy. They uh, analyzed a series of uh, nine individuals with chronic or recurrent urticaria. Three of them had also abdominal symptoms and 11 sub control subjects. They measured DAO plasma levels, DAO release after heparin infusion. 
you know that heparin um, liberates DAO, DAO in intestinal cells. And there were some ones where we measured the, the jejunal biopsy for mucosal activity. So what we see here is the range of the, the, the DAO in plasma. You can see in the column that it says post-heparin plasma DAO. This is the range of value in these particular cases. And here you can see the plasma in the other symptoms with recurrent torticaria. So those who are which are low are not different from the patients which have a problem. We're getting sound problems from the speaker. The sound is being received slowly. We have a problem with the sound of the speaker. The conclusion of the study is that although uh, we could not uh, see a low DAO, DAO activity, In some cases, the control uh, patients So that was a first step to attract the attention on this problem. We move on to a wider study. And in this uh, South Korea study, what we did was analyzing 75 patients diagnosed with uh, chronic idiopathic urticaria in this period of age. And 75 uh, healthy controls. We had an assessment of symptoms, uh, the uh, severity of the urticaria, and uh, we measured levels of histamine in plasma and, and DAO levels in plasma. We're, we're having some, some problems of sound. Um, we divide it into three groups, the control group of healthy individuals that had uh, chronic urticaria symptoms. Some of them didn't have digestive symptoms. Okay, we're, we're having problems with the sound that we're receiving here in the booth for the uh, translation. Abdominal diffuse pain and also uh, bloating, flatulence and diarrhea. Uh, so group A and group B, um, they were not different in the severity of this urtic area or the um, well, they were quite uh, well balanced, um, so to speak. And when we analyzed the histamine levels in plasma, we saw that these urticaria groups it had uh, individuals. We can see it here. But when we measured the uh, DAO activity in the three groups, we saw that it was um, quite similar maybe a little bit more reduced, but they were not very relevant values. They were not statistically significant in the groups of individuals that had this chronic urticaria and the other symptoms. So we could see that this chronic urticaria, a spontaneous one, we couldn't say that it was due to a DAO um, deficit in a clear way. But most more recently, in the year 2017, we had this study in which we had two patients diagnosed with chronic urticaria with, uh, for a long time, and they wouldn't respond to um one, one pill a day. Uh, because nowadays, um, and they wouldn't respond to a histamine-free diet. Um, we're sorry, but we're having problems to re receiving the sound for the translation. So, these 20 patients, we see the ones that had less than 10 units with the new units. And these patients, these patients were divided randomly into groups and a group included parallel groups with the was scale, with the evaluation assessment scale of severity of the urtic area. We carried out this at the beginning and they spent one month in treatment with placebo or daosin. 
then 15 days in uh, cleaning period, then they repeated the questionnaires for evaluation of the Arctic area, and then they did the crossing. Those with DAO play, uh, went to placebo, and placebo went to DAO, DAO in a double-blind design. So it was, again, 15 days of cleaning. There was no restriction of the diet. So clearly, when the periods in which the patients had been having the supplement with the amino acids, they had a decrease, a clear decrease, statistically significantly relevant in the score. So this, the more the score in this case, the worse is Arctic area. So in this case, the improvement was clear. Now we also saw that the bigger uh, the, the lower the DAO uh, level in plasma, and this was correlated with a better improvement of Arctic area when it was supplemented by DAO. So apparently in patients with DAO deficit, the supplementation with DAO was much better. So this is a study that proves that idiopathic chronic urticaria with DAO deficit in these patients supplement with exogenous DOA could be useful. When they analyze the antihistaminic consumption, the number of patients needing antihistamine uh, drugs did not vary when they started with placebo or uh, DAO, but it did decrease the number of uh, Patients um, was not different, but the number of pills was different, and this is something significant for these patients. So, in uh, atopic eczema, we see this study published in the main allergy journal that um, assessed uh, these patients with atopic eczema and intolerance to histamine and volunteers, volunteers as well. We can see the histamine in plasma, the, the, the amino oxidase serum activity with the help of radio extraction assays. And of course, detailed clinical evaluations of characteristic features of AE and HIT and HIT. Here in the first graph, we see in gray the control patients, in brown those with ectopic eczema, and in uh, green those with histaminosis. You can see the difference here of histaminosis, cephalia, flushing, gastrointestinal uh, symptoms, intolerance to food, to alcohol, etc. So patients with histaminosis and atopic eczema, this activity was diminished in a statistically significant manner with regard to the control group. And the levels of histamine were statistically significant in both groups. When DAO was measured, patients both with histaminosis, with eczema, it was not very high, 20%, one out of every five. But this was significant, that none of them had decreased DAO. When there is a sub-analysis of the patients with eczema and low levels of DAO with regard to patients with ectopic eczema but le normal levels with DAO in plasma, they see that the first ones have a higher frequency of a headache and gastrointestinal symptoms, 71 as opposed to 31%. A subgroup of these patients that had atopic eczema and, D and low DAO 
activity, 17 patients in specifically, instead of having exogenous GEO, they have a free diet which is low in histamine for two weeks, and they have a, an oral antihistaminic once a day. Here, we should not confuse with patients with uh, histaminosis or atopic eczema. In the paper, there were no colors, but these are co the color patients in green. Patients that uh, had a total disappearance of the sy symptoms and a high number of patients with an improvement of more than 50% in the symptoms, headache, flushing, and gastrointestinal system, symptoms. So in these patients in particular, the lowering of histamine uh, may help. And the score that we use to assess the seriousness of atopic dermatitis, we see that there is a significant improvement after two weeks without histamine in the subjective and objective parameters. So what we conclude here, what the authors conclude, is that possibly a subgroup of patients with atopic dermatitis that also have other symptoms that suggest histaminosis, maybe it may be relevant to measure the DAO, DAO in plasma and supplement with DO, uh, vitamin D, vitamin C, etc. And finally, I'd like to draw your attention on intolerance to inflammatory, anti-inflammatory drugs. I want to make reference here to the aforementioned study. See the analysis of patients. We can see what I just said. Patients that referred their symptoms to worsen with the NSAID. NSAIDs, as you know, they are powerful uh, DO blockers. And in these patients in particular, it was clearly seen that they had a DAO in plasma that was lower than those with NSAID. This is consistent with the number of mutations with patients with NSAIDs intolerance, as opposed to the ones that did not worsen the situation. What is our experience? There are patients that come because they had uh, cutaneous reactions with NSAID, hypersensitivity, etc. They may be into the, of two types, angioedema and other asthma symptoms, etc. 100% of patients that come with uh, cutaneous reactions because of the NSAID, you see a deficit of a uh, DAO that reacted only with the NSAID or a food that is rich in histamine. So the symptoms do not come quickly, as in the case of allergies, but it could take a few hours to happen. So I'd like to draw your attention on this. Let's not be disoriented by uh, these uh, facts because we know that the evidence shows what we just seen. And uh, concluding remarks, histamine is a biological amine with pervasive effects on the human body, with the skin and the immune system being soundly implicated uh, through all four histamine receptors. Um, DAO is important for extracellular histamine degradation, particularly with the gut, but its importance is not so clear in, in the particular case of skin. It could degrade histamine at, an, at a gut level, though. DEO deficiency may present any symptoms. However, uh, DEO deficiency is not uh, consistently proven.
in most patients with CSU. Possibly other factors may also be involved. CSU supplementation. On to exogenous DO supplement, topic dermatitis is a complex disease. In a group of patients with topic eczema, DO deficiency may be present and explain other associated symptoms. In patients with hypersensitivity, reactions for NSAID, uh, DO deficiency may be suspected as well. So we come back to the same NSAID and there's no reaction. So thank you for your attention.